And I have the privilege of introducing Dr. Joycelyn Elders, who has been the past United States Surgeon General and has been a relentless patient advocate. She has advanced public health policies regarding vaccinations and the prevention of communicable diseases. In the beginning of her career, she promoted effective health policy regarding childhood vaccinations and diseases such as polio. Now she finds herself full circle and is facing some of the same public health problems. Dr. Elders, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Dr. Kavanaugh for working so hard year after year with Health Watch to organize these wonderful, important seminars. I want to thank each of the speakers. You've had excellent speakers this morning that I heard of, and thank all of you for attending what you've been doing, what you're going to have to continue to do to make sure that we're doing what we need to get do and get done on public health. We have to realize that COVID has taught us an awful lot. And I hope that we can pick up our blinders, be exposed to 2020 vision, and use this opportunity to make, do, and prepare wonderful health control solve the problems we've got. As you know, the United States presently has a triple threat caused by infectious diseases, which should have been better controlled. We know that, and we've got to do that. Much of this afternoon will be focused on control to SARS COVID-2 or COVID-19. And this COVID-19 has opened our eyes. We've now got 2020 vision. We're also seeing a raging monkeypox ep epidemic. You know, when I saw the pictures and the exposures, I thought, oh my God, we've got chicken pox again. But it's monkeypox, and you'll be learning more and more about this new epidemic disease. And first of all, we need to absolutely know that you know, we think monkeypox and it thinks it's caused by monkeys. Well, no, that's not true. We also have a recent outbreak of polio using the new technologies that we developed in the rural areas of New York. So we know that that is something we, we shouldn't have to be talking about polio in 2022. We thought polio had been eradicated from the health scene. This was taken from multiple samples of wastewater in New York. We all know that vaccination is absolutely key. And we must keep our vaccination up to date. Vaccination hesitancy is on the rise. In some rural counties, rates of vaccination have fallen below 60%. A community needs 80 or 90% of its citizens to be vaccinated before we can stop the spread. So it's very important and very critical that we deal with this important problem. Monkeypox can affect all sexes and ages. In Africa, it's common for the diseases to exist in children. And that's because it's of the close contact. So we don't need to think that if this is a, some venereal disease, you know, much of the data that we know about monkeypox so far has been seen in homosexual men. So far, vaccines and their securities are, are not readily available. And we do not have an adequate supply of shots for everybody. We need to make sure that the people who need them get them. And we have to have real education. The therapeutics are in short supply. And the education on avoiding closer intimate contact with strangers is key. We all know that COVID-19 is still with us. The rates of infection and death are still high. We got some wonderful information about immunizations this morning, and you'll learn much more later this afternoon. 
We'll learn more about long COVID. And we heard some about that long COVID this morning. That is an all too common occurrence. So we want to avoid it. Similar to polio and monkeypox, vaccinations are key to stopping the epidemic. And we in public health must know that we're the key people and we've got to lead this. According to the New York Times in late August of this year, the United States only had 67% of its population receiving a two-dose vaccine and only 32% had been boosted. The U.S. is 68th in the world worth the Malaysia, Nicaragua, Cambodia, Malta, and Chile. These are countries less world developed than the United States, but we're behind, as you heard this morning, many other countries. Public health must be supported. They must hold their ground and not bend to public policy and political pressure. And we all know that that happens very often with us. You'll hear more about this this afternoon regarding workplace violence and threats against public health and healthcare workers. We must not only educate public, but also engage community leaders, educate their community. We've got to deal with this triple threat that's coming on us. We must deal, but make sure we push and get everyone vaccinated. We've got the best care system in the world. Our problem is we do not have a very good public health system. We've got to make sure that our federal communities all over the world are involved. We've got to involve state, city, county, and community health. We've got to public health is absolutely the key and the leader and must begin to learn to deal with being the leader, not just in making sure that we provide prevention, but we've got to make sure that we also have intervention and provide self-care for our communities. We've got to go back to being real public health community. So when we look at the role of public health, of what we should be about, first of all, this public health is the leader for safety health in our community. For, or for the world. Public health learn to listen to our community. We're the major leader for public health safety. We must not ever forget that. We got to learn so we can lead. When we think about listening to our communities, we often we got to listen to the people who feel that they don't want, don't want to be immunized, receive a vaccination. Well, let's listen to them. But let's listen, listen to what they have to say, use what they have to say to make sure we get most of the country immunized. We all know we have to have 80% of our community immunized before we can really eradicate this disease. We've got to eradicate the problems. COVID-19 taught us very clearly the importance of equity racism, elitism, and it's told us, first of all, everybody has to be involved. We can't just immunize one little segment and leave those that don't know where to go to get immunized. We must immunize everybody and we must immunize every country. We all have to be involved. We've got to develop better vaccines, better detection, and better communication and collaboration with all countries all over the world because until everybody is immunized, everybody is protected, none of us are protected. We have gotta educate and empower our whole country, the whole world and all of our rural and local communities. We've gotta reach out, continue to do good high quality research. Our companies, public and private, must cooperate. And we saw some of this, uh, much of this going on with our companies doing the COVID problems. So I feel
We've got to continue to be, do this. We've got to be successful. The health of our country is at stake. And we've got to make sure that we reach all of them. We must educate not only the public, we've got to engage community leaders, to educate their community. We've got to involve everybody. So as we start out, we have to know immunizations are key. We've got to make sure everybody needs to be involved. We've got to keep our children in school, make sure that they're in school. And we've heard the importance of vaccination in children and how we have to scale down those immunizations for some of our very small children. But we've got to immunize them so they can be in school. We've found that some of them got more than two years behind in education. We've learned that we've got to involve our public transportation system. So thank you. Thank you so much for getting everybody involved. We are all learning as much as we possibly can and doing the very best that we can to get done what we've got to get done. Public health has got to be in the forefront all over the world. We've got to be leaders and we've got to use this opportunity to help everybody know what we're all about. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Elders. I, I should add that Dr. Joycelyn Elders has been a supporter of Health Watch for many years now, over a decade. She first presented at our conference back in 2007 and has presented at almost every one over the last decade. I have to really thank you for all the support that you've not only given our organization, but the community, the nation as a whole, and the leadership that you've displayed is just unbelievable. So thank you very much for taking time out today to speak to us. And I do hope many will take your words to heart, and I think that they will. And I do agree with you that we absolutely need to vaccinate the world to get a control of this pandemic. Thank you.